Hi, amazing viewers. Welcome to Christianity over Islam with Shanshuman. And on today's debate, Muslim converts to Christianity after finding out the truth about his own prophet. Let's watch this amazing video. What's your yeah, background? Uh, well, uh, before we get into that, uh, the nature of this, this discussion started as a uh malicious joke on you and i apologize for that i you must get that a lot so i didn't mean any harm sure, yeah. by the yeah, yeah, conversation and whatnot uh secondly i understand that you do Are take you please Are uh, you muslim? please let's have some decorum please okay, uh, I, I just wanted to say are you a muslim well if you let me finish uh, do you want me to muzzle you like Jesus muzzled Muhammad in hell? I'm trying to appreciate you and what I you're don't want to appreciate you. Do you are you a Muslim? So yes you or no? You Five, respect me. Four, three. Are you a Muslim or are you a fake? I am a Muslim, yes. Okay, so that's all I wanted to know because you said you're playing a joke on me, but the joke is on Muhammad. No, 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 no. I, I didn't I didn't say I was playing a joke. I said it was a joke. Someone played a joke on us. That oh, okay. I I'm sorry. To... That's why I got defensive. My apologies, Jadir, no. because that's why I got defensive. I thought someone was sending you to play a joke on me. So someone played a joke on you and me, you mean? Okay, now go yeah, ahead. Clear. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to talk to someone else. They sent me your Skype address, and then this house all happens. But I just wanted to apologize for that because, you know. That's like, okay. You don't need to apologize, but who tried to set you up? Some guy on Discord. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, so why, the second... you keep, why you keep being a, an ass and talking down to me, and then you wonder why I humiliate you? Don't worry about it. Are you my mother and father? Tell me not to worry about it. Well, I'm mean, gonna if, worry about it. If you wanna if... get the guy's name and whatever, I mean, no. So yeah, but I'm not gonna do it in public. So, so do you know? Did your mother teach you how to talk a little more respectfully to people when you say, "Don't worry about it"? And you, what are you like a narcissist? You tell people what to do because you see how you're talking to me, and you wonder why I'm treating you the way I do. Is that I, what just, you? I, just, I think it was ingested originally. I don't think it's very uh, okay. Severe, Let's come back so. to why you became a Muslim. What were you? What was your background? What were you raised? Were you were you raised atheist, agnostic, Christian, Buddhist? What were you? Uh, all of the above, mostly agnostic in the beginning. Okay, in the beginning, you were you an agnostic, or your parents were agnostics as well? I was agnostic. My parents were atheists. My grandparents were Christian. I see. So, and so, how long have you been a Muslim? Like a year now. You're okay. So, on your journey, what made you become a Muslim? Now we can talk about what really matters. Forget about who set you up and set me up, but don't talk down to me, so I don't talk down to you. So, what made you become a Muslim? Uh. Well, I did. I do appreciate you having me here. I wanted to make sure, make that known. Um, I understand your intentions are good. You want to um, see. Well, I asked you a question. Message. You see, you. I asked you a question. Uh, I, 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 I will answer your question. I just. I wanted to Let's say this in the beginning. The but... Let's forget the niceties. Get to the okay. point, friend. Uh, you don't I, know my heart. I appreciate I the niceties. So, friend, you don't know your my heart. I don't know your heart. God knows my heart. Whether I'm nice or not, forget about personality. Can you get to the point? What made you become a Muslim? Um, when I decided to, uh, ponder about the nature of God. Okay. God, so, what God's and, nature is. So why would you become a Muslim? That doesn't mean you become a Muslim by pondering the nature of God. So what, what led you to Islam? Um, I believe that their description of what God is, is true. What's the description of God? Let's see how much you know the Quran. How does the Quran describe Allah? Um, he is the creator. He was there before creation. He is that can be said of any personal deity believed by any theistic group that believes in a personal being. That's not sufficient to show Islam is true. Jews believe that. Christians believe that. What is it about Allah of the Quran? That leads you to assume that all of the crowns are true God. Mm, probably because he's just. No, I don't know if I should laugh or cry. He's just. Yep. And so even let's go with that before I get into the Quran itself. You just describe a theistic God 
that is affirmed by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. You still haven't told me why I love the Quran. Uh, well, first, I, I want to make clear, I don't believe that God um, is a person. So, he doesn't, he doesn't have a person. So it's an it. So, when the Quran describes Allah as speaking and communicating, so Allah is an it? Yeah. Really, can you give me the verse of the Quran that says Allah is an it? Uh, it doesn't say it. It uses he because... Um, that's just how Arabic is. Uh, how prove Arabic it. Works. Give me the Arabic dictionary lexicon. It says that's how the Arabic is. Don't make assertions. Prove it. Okay, let's see. Give me the Arabic lexicon which says that the reason why Allah is described with masculine pronouns as opposed to feminine pronouns is because he's in it. <clears throat> so if it's in it, why not call him she? Give me the Quran and the Arabic lexicons. Don't make assertions you can't prove. Okay. You don't mind waiting for a response well yeah well, i'm waiting because uh, you're just feeding me what you think allah is you haven't even given me anything from the quran to back up your assertion okay so as in it can you call him she and you can you say oh allah she is so wonderful and she is so majestic okay can you do that by the way as you're looking up a dictionary that you're going to butcher so can you say Allah she is wonderful she is majestic after all if Allah is neither male nor female then that means you can apply both pronouns to Allah you can call him a he and a she right so can you say I want this recorded can you say Allah she is wonderful she is majestic no say it again no but wait I thought you said Allah is not a person it's in it why can't you because if you can use he for Allah why can't you use she for Allah because Allah is beyond gender According to you, yep. that's that's what they fed you. Yep. All right. So, okay. So now, give me any mm, source that says that Allah is in it. Show it to me. Okay. I'm waiting. So, first, we need to say that there's no verse in the Quran that uses... Uh, basically, every time Allah is referred to, it has the word Hawa, which means he. Hua, yeah? In the Arabic. So, no, no feminine pronouns or no verbs? Feminine. No Why feminine. not? It even, it even specifies this in one of the verses. I know. Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 1. To no, 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 no. No, no, no. Allah, no, no. Not that. Not that. Surah okay, now, I'm going to repeat my question again. Can you show me any verse in the Quran where feminine pronouns, verbs, and adjectives are used for Allah? There is no feminine Why not? He's an it. And it can be called with masculine or feminine pronouns and verbs and adjectives. Why only masculine? Because the nature of God is singular. What does singular have to do with masculine pronouns and verbs? You make no sense. Because in the Arabic language... You don't know Arabic. You've just been a Muslim here. Do me a favor. I'm going to give you a chapter of the Quran. I want you to read the Arabic. I'm going to give you the Arabic link. You're going to read because you're now pontificate in Arabic and you've been a Muslim only for a year. I'm not going to give you a link. You're going to read the Arabic, and you're going to parse it and break it down for me. Are you ready? I will not be able to do that. Say it again. I will not be able to do that. So stop talking about the Arabic when you have no clue what the Arabic is. Stop telling me what the Arabic is. So I'm going to make it easy for you. This is the third time. If Allah is in it, that means he's beyond gender. Because he's beyond gender, you can then apply masculine and feminine pronouns, verbs, participles, adjectives, Allah, because he's neither male nor female. He's beyond gender, so you can use all genders to describe him. So why only masculine <clears throat> pronouns, verbs, participles, adjectives? The Quran only refers to him in the masculine. Why? Because you told me Allah is in it. Why? You still didn't give me the answer. Because singular means it can't be feminine or plural. Where did you get that from? And the, the fact is, there is a plural noun used for Allah, and Allah is speaking of himself in the plural all throughout the Quran. We, us, our, and Allahumma. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Allah throughout the Quran is saying, we, us, our. And then there's the word Allahumma used five times of Allah, and that's plural, that's not singular. So what are you talking about, man? So let's come back to the issue. Why did you become Muslim again? Because I believe Islam is the truth. Why? Because the nature of God is true in Islam. We're going to go back to that again? Nothing you've told me uh, about Allah 
is unique to Islam because it's also true of Jews and Christians, meaning the Judeo-Christian concept of God. Same thing applies, just, merciful, loving. In fact, the Judeo-Christian concept does you one better. It says that God can be your spiritual heavenly father, whereas Allah cannot be in the Quran. He's not your uh, father. Well, first off, we don't believe that God is all loving. We say he's the most loving. So okay. there... And now you told me what you don't believe. Prove it, though. I, I agree. Allah is not loving at all. Even his love is conditional. But you just made an assertion. Where did you get the Quran says he's not all? And I agree with you. But I want you to prove it because you've been, you're parroting like a par parakeet what you've been fed. Where does the Quran say he's not all loving? Uh, though I agree with you. I just want to put you on the spot to show you don't know what you're talking about. You're just parroting a script that you inherited from those who deceived you. Uh, I don't know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Which verse. Yeah, I know. I know you don't. Uh, okay, but I can't so, find it. So let's yeah, you try can, it. I, I will. I will give you ten million dollars, which I don't have. If you can tell me where the Quran says he's not all loving, you may. And I agree with you. He's not. But I want you to show me where it says he's not all loving. He's most loving. And then I want you to parse the Arabic to prove to me that in the Arabic it should be most loving, not all loving. So you're gonna just refer to the Arabic. Because the Quran is in Arabic, doesn't air. Open up your Quran. Let me tell you what language the Quran is. It ain't English and ain't Swahili. You have your Quran? Yes, I do. Open, open up chapter forty-three, read three and four. What language is the Quran? Chapter forty-three, verse three to four. You mean appeal to the Arabic? Is, you the appeal Quran to the Arabic. Is an Arabic, Arabic Quran. Okay, but earlier you appealed to the Arabic, and you're telling me the Arabic this, Arabic that. Now when I'm telling you, <laughs> and you're saying you're appealing to Arabic. Okay, so you agree the Quran says it's an Arabic Quran, right? Yeah. Okay, so then why are you asking me to appeal to the Arabic? First of all, you appeal to the Arabic. Now, when I appeal to the Arabic, why am I appealing to the Arabic? Okay, so can you give me a good reason why you chose Islam as your religion? I'm still waiting because I have, I have issues with Islam, but I haven't gotten there because I'm still trying to get this conversation off the ground. Why you became a Muslim from agnostic? You haven't given me any good reason. So do you have an issue with the Arabic or can I just use English? No, I don't care. You, friend, let's put it in context. Who appealed to the Arabic earlier, me or you? Um, you wanted an explanation. Okay, now so give, me the to give, you my explanation. He's most loving. give me in the Quran where he's most loving and not all loving. Okay. Al Wadud, right? The loving so compassion. I have to, I have to show you that God is not all loving. No, I, I agree that your God is not all loving. So I don't have a debate, but what I'm doing is trying to teach you that stop parroting what people told you and do your own investigation. Because what you've given me is a script because you do not know how to prove any of this because you heard someone tell you these things and you're parroting them without going back and investigating. But I do agree with you. Allah is not all loving. His love is conditional and it's, it's capricious. I agree because Allah of the Quran yeah. is not true God. But I'm putting you on the spot to prove your assertion, to show you you don't know what you're talking about. And I do this so that you can wake up. So show me where it says he's most loving, not all loving. So it needs to say, I am Allah okay. and I am most loving. Is that what you're okay, saying? Okay, and let's go back to the next. Okay, let me, let's move forward. Okay, so can you give me now the, the reason why you chose Allah of the Quran as your God? You still haven't given me a reason. Because he's the most just. Let's try this a few times. Everything you've told me is applicable to any theistic concept of God that believes in a personal creator God. Jews, Christians, Muslims. So why did I, you... I wouldn't agree with Quran? that, honestly. Say what? I wouldn't agree with that, honestly. So you mean you disagree with Muhammad in the Quran who says that my God and your God are one and the same? Open up chapter 29, verse 46 for me, please. 29, 46. Open it up for me. Well, you're referring to your God based on the scripture. Can so you open the Quran? I'm, I'm referring what to the God thing? before scripture. Can you can you open up what the Quran says? Don't argue with me. Let your book speak for you because you're not a prophet. You follow the Quran. Can you open up 2946? See what the Quran says. Don't argue. Just open up your book. Read it, man. I'm appealing to your book and you're appealing to your own knowledge. I'm giving you your book. So what does your book say? 2946. Do not argue with the people of the scripture except in a way that is best, except for those who commit injustice among them and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you and our God and your God is one and we are Muslims. To him. Okay, so according to Quran, my God and your God is the same. 
It says we are Muslims to him. Are you a Muslim? Did you read? Because the word Islam means submit, right? But you see how you just uh, did the tap dance? Did you read the part before that says, say to me, you say to me, my God and your God is the same. Can you say that to me? Can you confirm that you believe the Quran? Say to me now, because you're told to say this to me, my God and your God is what? One. There okay, is one so, God. So do you agree that your God and my God are one, the same? Yes, there is one God. Okay, so is it the same? Because that's what the Quran is telling you to tell me, invite me, not to a different God, an alien God, a foreign God, but to the same God. You you and have you the same God as me. Okay, but wait, in my Bible, the God that speaks in my Bible is a spiritual father to his people, but your God is not. So how can it be the same God? Um, that's because you're relying on a scripture that isn't entirely revelation. You mean when the Quran says my scripture is entirely perfect and uncorrupt. See, again, you're parroting. It doesn't like say it. that. It Open doesn't up chapter that. 2, verse 40 to 44. You want to bet? Now I'm going to school you badly. <laughs> Open up your Quran. <laughs> Open up chapter Quran 2. Quran 2. What was it? Go to chapter 2, verse 40. We're going to laugh at your prophet at your expense. Keep laughing. Okay. okay. Keep laughing because I'm gonna very I'm gonna expose Muhammad. <laughs> Guys, he just laughed at his prophet. We laugh with him at your prophet. Now go to chapter two, verses forty to forty-four. Now we're gonna go through your Quran, which you believe, to see if my scripture is corrupt, or is it your book that's corrupt according to your own sources? So let's take it point by point. Read chapter two, verses forty to forty-four. Children of Israel uh children of Israel. Don't, don't say it under your breath. Don't be scared of your Quran. Read no, I just Sorry, I just mm -hmm. speak slowly sometimes. Speak less so we can hear you. Uh, do I need to turn up myself, actually? Do I need We're, to, like... Go ahead, we can hear you. Keep reading. Okay. Uh, children of Israel, remember the favors I have bestowed upon you and fulfill the covenant that you made with me. I shall fulfill the covenant I made with you. Fear me alone. And believe in the message I have sent down, which fulfills that predictions about the last prophet in their scripture. You just, butchered, you... you just butchered chapter 2, verse 41, so badly because of mistranslation that you're reading. That's not what 241 says. Okay, I'll use a different translation. Yeah, you you better. Know. That's a polemical translation that butchers the Arabic. And yet you can claim our book is corrupt, but you Muslims are corrupting your book to your shame. Okay. 241. I'll use Sahih International. Is that fine? That's even worse. But go to 241. Let's see how it butchers the Arabic. 241. Well, I'm not reading the Arabic, so... That's okay. You're basically, But the translations are supposedly translating Arabic, and they're butchering the Arabic. But go to 241. It doesn't say fulfilling the prophet. It says confirming what is with you. That's what literally the Arabic says. But go ahead. Read 241. I want to see how Sally butchers it. And believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is already with you. Okay, now that's good. Uh, it passes. Confirming what? That which is already with you. Talking to the people of the book, the children of Israel, time Muhammad. What did they have? Uh, they and have. What does the, the verb confirm mean? Sadaqa. Confirm. Yeah, confirming what is already with you, not what you used to have, you no longer have. What you have right now at Muhammad's time, the Quran confirms it. What does the word confirm mean? To. Sadaqa. What does the verb sadaqa mean? I don't know what that word in Arabic is. It means to bear witness, to testify, to confirm and have faith in something that is reliable, trustworthy, veritable. So you just laughed at your prophet, and I laugh at him too, but for another reason. Because he says the proof that the Quran is true, it confirms what they had with them at that time. But you're not done yet. Keep finishing. That was 41. Keep reading, buddy. Go all the way to 44. And do not be the... F and. Be not the first to disbelieve in it, and do not exchange my signs for a small price, and fear me. Okay, next verse. Well, and do not mix the truth with false. Uh, sorry, and do not mix the truth with with falsehood, or conceal the truth while you know it. Can I ask you a question? If you don't have the truth, how can you conceal it? Can you conceal something you don't have? Um, no. Okay, so I want everyone to hear what you said. Can you conceal something you don't have? No. Okay, so now what you just read is, Muhammad's Quran is supposed to confirm what they have, 
and they're concealing the truth, which means they have to have the truth to conceal it, but then finish it to 44. 244. Establish prayer and give zakat and bow with those who bow in worship. So you read 43, 44? No, I read 43. I didn't hear the, the 44 where it says, and you study the book. Yeah, I'm about to. Okay, go ahead. Just in case, go ahead. Do you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture? Okay, so now we have, and I'm going to give you more. We're not done yet, but I want you to some, some, pay attention so that when I come and ask you a question, you don't have amnesia. The Quran confirms what they have with them at that time. They know the truth, but conceal it, and they recite the scriptures. And you laughed at me when I said the Quran testified. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so now, you agree you, that they concealed the truth? And I, do you agree they have the scripture and they have the very books that the Quran confirms to be true? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think we both agree. Okay, well, so you agree that they what they have, the Quran confirms is true, right? I believe what they have. Has 41, don't tell me what you believe. It's in front of your eyes. This Quran confirms what is already with you. Do we need to reread that five more times? Um, confirm, uh, yeah, that's what it says. Okay, now, go to 89, chapter 2, verse 89. Chapter 2, verse 89. Uh, and when there came a book from Allah confirming that which was with them. What what does it do? What does the book, the Quran, your Quran supposedly do? It confirms that which was with them. Oh, not something they no longer have. Okay, finish it. Although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved, but then when there came to them that which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be upon the disbelievers. Okay. So the Quran again says, as proof that it is from the same God that the Jews worship, my Quran confirms what you have. Okay, but we're not done. We got, so I want you to go through these verses, then we engage these texts. Read now 91. Verse 91, 291. Same chapter. We ain't going nowhere. Just read verse 91. And when it is said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say, we believe only in what is revealed to us. Mm -hmm. And they disbelieve in what came after it. While it is the truth confirming that which is with them. Say, okay, did you catch the argument of Muhammad? Why would yeah. you want to disbelieve in the Quran when this Quran confirms what is with you, what you have already, showing that the Quran is true, it's from the same source? Are you catching this? Because when I ask you a question, I don't want you to then forget what you're reading, so we have to reread this again. You catching these? Yeah, I, I think I get you. Okay, glad you get, you're getting me. A few more verses, and about we're going to see what Jesus did, and I'm going to ask you some questions. So hopefully you're getting it, so you don't come back and say, no, 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 that's not what it said. Because I don't want to have to go back through this five more times. Same chapter 2, read 91. That's what I did. Okay, now read 97. Just making sure, 89, 91. Now read 97. Say, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, it is none but he who has brought it down upon your heart by the permission of Allah. Confirming that which was before it and as a guidance and good tidings for the believers Are you seeing this repeated pattern confirming what is already with you confirming what is with them what they have? Confirming what is right in front of it before it means in front of it. Are you seeing this repeated emphasis? Yeah, okay now 101 chapter 2 verse 101 Uh, and when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them, a party Again, of huh? those, a party of those, them, huh? you're gonna, let me finish. Oh. Do I need a to party. give you, do I need to give you like 30 more where the Quran keeps saying, 
the party of those who had been given the scripture through the scripture of the law behind their backs as if they mm -hmm. did not know exactly what it contained. So, okay, so do I need to give you like 30 more verses that says that one of the proofs that the Quran is from the same God is true? It confirms what is with them, what they have, what it's in front of them. And the verb sadaqa means to bear witness, to believe in, to testify as being true. Do I need to give you 30 more or do oh, you get the point? Actually, yeah. Do you have, can I have more verses? I want to okay, know. chapter 4, verse 47. I'm going to have a few though. Go to chapter 4, verse 47. Oh, four. my pleasure. My pleasure, because now we're going to talk about Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 47, what he did. Right. 447. Uh, oh, you who were given the scripture, believe in what we have sent down, confirming that which is with you before we obliterate faces and turn them towards their backs or curse them as we cursed the Sabbath breakers and ever is the matter of the law accomplished. Okay, now go to chapter 12, verse 111, because you wanted more. I'm on, is this your the wishes same? My no, 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 the same. Say it again? Uh, no, nothing, sorry. Chapter 12, verse 111. Chapter 12, verse 111. There was certainly in their stories a lesson for those of understanding. Never was it a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it, and a detailed explanation of all things, and guidance of a mercy for people who believe. So what does the Quran do? It confirms what again? Uh, of what was before it. Do you know what the Arabic uh, phrase is? Mm. Here, I'm gonna give it to you in transliteration, so you don't need to read Arabic. I'm gonna, I wanna try, 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 try reading uh, it. Okay. You could, do you know the Arabic is right there? What is it? What's the Arabic says confirming what is be before it? Let's see if you know. Uh, the word, the confirmation, the word confirmation. The is word, what is the Arabic for confirming what was before it? Uh, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if you know parts no, of it. No, I'm not going to try reading it. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to give it to you. I put it on the screen. Tas, uh, you see it says, Tastika. You see Tastika, that's from Sadaka. Shamunia. Yadehi. Do you see the word Baina Yadehi? Baina Yadehi. You see it? Tastika. Uh, Aladi or Yadehi. I can read that. I can read that actually. Okay, do you see what Baina Yadehi Baina what does that mean? Baina it means between Baina Yadehi his hands. So here it's saying the Quran confirms what is between his hands. What does that mean? Between his hands? Uh in this verse? What does the phrase Baina Yadehi between his hands mean? I don't know what that means in Arabic. Between his hands means that which is in front of him that he can pick up and read me, that he has access to. Let me see. Um, I can't copy the Arabic from here. Let me get a different. You can do what you want. I can give you Muhammad Assad on explaining what the word Baina Yadehi means. Wow. Baina Yadeya means between his hands, between my hands. This is an Arabic expression meaning that which is between his hands or, <clears throat> or my hands or your hands. Depending on how you <clears throat> write the word for hand, yad, yaday he means his hands. So it's an expression meaning that which he has access to, which is in front of him, which he can pick up. Whatever was there in front of him at that time. Are, you, are we talking about 1211 or 1211? 1111. It's right there. I gave it to you. Tasdiqa. Aladi baina yadehi. Baina yadehi. It's there, dude. Uh, I'm not seeing that in the translations. I don't. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, where's the Arabic? You're wasting our time, right? I just no, 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 no. I'm serious. I, okay, I just so need to Baina, find that. You don't need. Uh, listen, friend. I don't know what what you're looking at. Here, let me give you a Quran browser. So look at. All right. You can go. you can you just like. Uh, I just put it on the screen. Do you see it on the screen? I just translate it. It's on the screen. Look at your screen. 
Well, that's the transliteration. Can you, do you have like a link oh, for? Okay, I'm gonna Arabic. give you the link for the Arabic. Yeah, you can read the Arabic. Well, I just want to. I just want to see. Can it, you so read the Arabic? I, I can't read the Arabic. I can. So how are you gonna confirm what's the words? Well, I I know the I know the letters and like how to say it. Oh, I just don't know what yep, it means. Here you go. Here, I'm gonna give you Islam Awaken. This has multiple Quran translations, free of charge. Here, let me give it to you. So I just want you to say. Yeah, this. I was just there. I didn't them. see. What? I was just there. I didn't see what you're talking about. Okay, you, I don't. You're not at Islam Awaken, dude. Hold on. I just gave you the link. I'm gonna give you twelve one one one. What'd you say? Yeah, I'm using that link. It's okay, here you go. Here's the link. It's right there. The Arabic is right there. I don't know what you don't see, whoa, guys. Whoa, whoa. For the rest That's of you. You're wasting our time because you're not answering the question. But here you go. I'm sending private chat. There it is. 12111. The Arabic is right there. Do you see it? Parts it for me. And here I'm going to give you a translation by a Muslim. By a Muslim oh, on yeah. the meaning of the word. Um, here it is. Muhammad. Oh, I should have scrolled down. Sorry. Okay. Muhammad Samira. Okay. Here how they translate it. Muhammad Ahmed and Samira. Okay. Here's how they translate it. I'm going to put it on the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. All right, here you go. In their narration, information, stories there had been an example warning to those of the pure minds, hearts. It was not an information speech to be fabricated, but confirmation to which is between his hands. See, they translated day to day is between his hands. You see it? That's a, is that a tafsir or is that like what It's is that? a translation of the Arabic by Muhammad Ahmed Samira. Ahmed and Samira. It's right there. If you go there, here, let me get you the link. So they're telling you what I just told you. Baina Yadehi means it. So now, can we get to the point and not spend another five hours? What is the Quran confirming that was there at the time of Muhammad, which the Jews and Christians had? Uh, what, what, what was the Quran confirming? Um, the revelation. What did they have? That they were reading, that they were studying, because you remember 244, you recite the scripture. What scripture, what books did they have at the time of Muhammad that Muhammad confirms to be the revelations of God, the same God that sent down the Quran? I believe the Quran refers to it as the Injil. So they'd be like. Okay, let's try this again. What were the books that the Jews and Christians historically would have had at that oh, time? Both, yeah. Say it again? But, yeah, the, the Torah and the Injil. Okay, and what is the Torah? Torah is the revelation from Moses. I'll give you one million bucks to show me a verse in the Quran where it says the Torah was given to Moses. Look it up and find it. Show me where it says the Torah is given to Moses. Show it to me. Let me see. Show me where it says the Torah is given to Moses. So you're like a parakeet. You only parrot what you've been brainwashed and fed. Mm. Uh, mm, ah, yeah. Do you want to give up? Because you're not going to find it. There's nothing in the Quran that says the Torah is given to Moses. One more second, please. Yeah. There's nothing in the Quran that says the Torah is given to Moses. It says a book was given to Moses, but it doesn't tell you what that book is. It says the Torah was given, but it doesn't tell you who. Say the second part again. Okay, let's try this again. The Torah Probably was given, but it doesn't say who. Nowhere in the Quran does it say the Torah was given to Moses. It says the Torah was given, but it doesn't tell you to Moses. It says a book was given to Moses, but it never tells you that book is the Torah. Hmm. Okay, so now let me repeat the question. Historically, at the time of Muhammad, what books did the Jews and Christians have that Muhammad confirms as true? Uh, I'm guessing you want me to just say scripture. What scriptures? Historically, archaeologically, textually, what other books do they have besides the ones I read today? What scripture? Um... Yeah. Historically, if you were to look at archaeology and history and textual manuscript evidence, what books did the Jews and Christians would have had at the time in Arabia and throughout the world?
this is the place where this video get more interesting if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do it to subscribe world that muhammad says my quran confirms to be true there are no other scriptures except what we have today but even if we go through what you're saying what was the injil at muhammad's time you said injil right what was the injil that the christians were reading at muhammad's time because you said injil yeah so what was it? Because it was there, and they had it, and they're reading it. Muhammad confirmed it to be true. So what Injil did they have? Uh, and it doesn't specify whether it's the canonical gospel or if it's just... What like... other books would they have had? You're not answering the question. When it says, confirming what is with you, that's an historical question. So we want to look at history and see what the Christians had at that time. Now I want you to prove that they had something other than the canonical Gospels. That wasn't Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Prove it. Um, Gospel of Thomas. So, wait. A Gnostic forgery. You just buried Muhammad further. The Gospel I'm of just Thomas. saying it has the title of Gospel. So Okay, let's go with it. So you just admit, because I want this recorded, because people are going to listen to you. Everyone, folks, he just confirmed the Gospel of Thomas, which presents a divine Christ who's not truly human, written by Gnostics that don't represent... The belief of Jews in the first century. So you're saying that's the gospel, huh? Because I'm going to read some snippets from it. You just no, you just mind. you just ask for examples of what they there could was have no had gospel of Thomas of the... at the time of Muhammad. You're you're on drugs. There was no gospel of Thomas at the time of Muhammad in the seventh century. What drugs are you taking? Isn't it dated to like two hundred? Like two? Isn't it like second, third? Was century? the gospel of Thomas in the hands of the Christians in Arabia at the time of Muhammad? Are you listening? uh i don't know if that's true. no it disappeared the only reason why you know of a gospel of thomas is because a coptic version centuries after christ was discovered in 1945 in nag hammadi egypt but at the time of muhammad there was no gospel of thomas so let's try again put down the stone let me repeat again what books did the christians have at the time of because i'm going to quote your muslim sources to show you but i'm giving you the benefit of doubt The Christians, what books do the Christians have? Do you really need to guess? Or you really want me to embarrass Muhammad for you? Because I'm going to show you from your own sources what it was. Well, let's not keep everyone Just come clean and say it, show dude. me what you're going to say. So. Just come clean and, and say it, buddy. Just come clean. Don't, don't tap dance. Say it. It's the, it's the New Testament scriptures. That's what they had. New Testament scriptures. I do okay here. Polly want to crack or repeat it three more times. New Testament scriptures. New Testament scriptures. Yeah, so yeah. so you're you you I just laughed when you said these scriptures that I have have been corrupted, but your prophet said you're a liar, they're not corrupt. So you the say you say that Moses was never given the Torah, but also no, you didn't hear me that they ever gave him you the New Testament. You didn't hear me. Let's so try to say you're being, you didn't hear me. Uh, you didn't hear me words. Jalil. you didn't hear me i said nowhere in your quran does it say the torah is given to moses repeat me and, and nowhere does the quran say it gave the new testament to the christians so, so let's try this again what injil did the christians have see i'm going to bury your your muhammad for being a smart aleck what was the injil that they have at the time of muhammad whatever gospel meant no 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 that doesn't get no no no, no. you're not going to run what did they have? Because I'm not going to quote your sources to show you. I'm going to now use, see, your, when you be a smart aleck, I'm going to punish Muhammad, your prophet. I'm going to humiliate him every time you try to be a smart aleck. So if you um, want to respect your prophet, watch your tongue because I'm going to smash him by the power of Jesus Christ and I'm going to humiliate you. So let's try it again. What was the Injil that the Christians had that Muhammad confirmed? I'm not a historian. I don't know. Oh, how convenient. Oh, so now what I want you to do, Polly Wanna Cracker, I want you to go check Google, the greatest scholar that never lived, and say the scriptures of the Christians in the seventh century, what were they? I'll let Sheikh Google bail out your prophet, even though he can't be bailed out, he's under the feet of Jesus. What scriptures the Christians had at the time of Muhammad? There is no doubt historically, even the groups that were in schism which the Muslims in their stupidity will call Yaqobiah, the Jacobites, and the historians and so on, they all had the 27 books of the New Testament. That's what they were reading. Uh, 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 
Now you want me to give you your Muslim sources to prove it? Now let me um, quote you your Muslim sources. If you had oh, tips here, I mean, that'd be great. I'd, I'd prefer that. You want me to give you the tips here to which one? Chapter 12, verse 111? Whichever, whichever one specifies what the books are supposed to be. Yeah. In your commentaries, they don't come out and mention the books. I'm giving you a Muslim catalog by a Muslim that mentions the books. It's called Fihris. That's what I was going to. And then Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, calls the Gospel of John as the Gospel that God gave Jesus for his followers. Just the so Gospel of John? Yes. Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, Sirat Rasulullah, you can read it in English because I know you don't read Arabic, translated by Alfred Guillaume, and I have the citation, pages 103-104, in trying to find the prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel, he mentions that the gospel that prophesied Muhammad, which God gave Jesus for his followers, is what John wrote down in the gospel of John, calling John's gospel the gospel that God gave to Jesus for his followers. Let me give you the quote. Oh. So, so do you agree that the gospel of John is the gospel? I just want to make sure I, I understand what you're saying. So... No, you you are saying that... No, Ibn Ishaq is saying, not me. Well, okay, so your position is that... No, not my position, Ibn Ishaq. So yeah, I'm going to correct you a third time. Okay, so what do you believe? What do you consider what I believe? I'm asking you to explain to me what the Quran is talking about. What is the gospel that the Quran is referring to at the time of Muhammad? What are you worried about my belief? Well, this guy this guy is saying it's the gospel of John, right? Is that this guy? You don't know who Ibn Ishaq is? Are you serious? I, I haven't heard the name. I haven't heard the name before. If you don't know Ibn Ishaq, you don't know anything because Ibn Ishaq wrote the first biography on the life of Muhammad in the year 750 AD. Sirat Rasulullah. Cool. Cool, huh? That's all you got is to say it, is cool. Uh... That's all you got to say is cool, huh? Are you, by the way, are you a Quran only Muslim? Because now you're going off topic because I know you're doing no. the then. What are you? No, I'm just a Muslim. So you're a Quran only Muslim? No, I'm just a Muslim. The Shia are Muslim and they believe that Abu Bakr, Omar, and Aisha are bastards. Oh, okay, come, can we just stick Okay, so please? what kind of Muslim are you? Stop playing this stupid game. Do you follow just the Quran or you follow the Quran and the Sunnah? I listen to what the Quran tells me to do, and the Quran says to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. So yes, oh, I follow so then, the Quran so and then the Sunnah. Why do you do the tap dance and tell me I'm just a Muslim? Because the Shia say they're Muslim, the Nation of Islam say they're Muslim. So you're a Sunni yeah, Muslim. I get that. Okay, good. A lot of, anyone can say they're Muslim. So okay, so Sunni Muslim. Now, since you follow the Sunnah, I want to give you Sunan Abu Dawood because that's accessible. This one Ibn Ishaq. You have to have the hard copy, and I have it quoted. But I want to give you something accessible. Hold on, so that you can read it with your own eyes. Okay, hold on, hold on, buddy. Because we still haven't gotten to the point because of you dragging it because you don't know Islam. You became a Muslim in your ignorance, but that's okay. Hold on. Hold on, let me show you something. You can open it up and read it with your own eyes. Here it is. Sunan Abu Dawud on Sunnah.com, so you don't need me to quote something that you cannot access because you got to buy the hard copy. So here's the link. This is actually quoted by Tafsir ibn Kathir in chapter 5, verse 41. Click on that link. Sunan Abu Dawood. Hassan by Al-Albani, meaning good. Book 39, Hadith 4434. Can you read it for me? Uh, narrated uh, Abdullah louder. ibn Umar. Don't say it under your breath loud so we can hear you. No, I just, I don't speak very loudly. Uh, it's okay. A group of Jews came and invited the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to... By the way, want, before you go on, when you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have a question about that, but go ahead. Wait, are you going to say it? Go ahead, read. Yes, yeah, you said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just go ahead, go ahead, keep reading. Okay. Um, to Kuf. So he visited them in their school. They said, Abdul Qasim, one of our men has committed fornication with a woman so pronounced judgment upon them they placed a cushion for the messenger of Allah who sat on it and said bring the Torah 
Then it was brought. He then withdrew the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it, saying, I believed in thee and in him who revealed thee. He then said, Bring me one who is learned among you. Then a young man was brought, the transmitter, then mentioned the rest of the tradition of stoning similar to the one translated by Malik from Nafi number 4431. Okay, so th they had a copy of the Torah, not the original Torah, and he says, I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee, confirming what you read from the Quran, that Muhammad confirms what they have at that time. So the scriptures they had, those were the scriptures Muhammad said are the uncorrupt words of God, and I bear witness to them, and I believe in them. Historically, we have copies of what the Jews were reading before the time of Christ, after the time of Christ, before the time of Muhammad, after the time of Muhammad, and the only books they had were the Old Testament books. Nothing different. Historically, the only Injil the Christians had at the time of Muhammad would have been the canonical Gospels. In fact, the entire New Testament, because for them, the entire New Testament was revealed by Christ, whether on earth or from heaven. So historically, the books they would have had are what I read today. And you laughed at me when I well, said... Didn't you say it was only the Gospel of John? Okay, let's go to the Gospel of John. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, I, you I sure? Want I want to hear it again. Let's we'll just go to the Gospel of John. You agree with this Gospel of John, right? I'll entertain that, yeah, sure. No, 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 you can't entertain it because he confirmed something, man. You're well, you didn't correct? show me that yet, so. Oh, I, I have it here, but you're going to trust me when I quote it to you? Well, I, I just was waiting for you to show me, that's all. Okay, here it goes, here it goes. I'll quote it for you, but don't tell me I don't accept it. This comes from, here, let me give you the source. You can now go on Amazon.com and go buy it. Here's the reference in the page number, and I'm going to quote it. Look at the private chat. That's the name of the book. You can go on Amazon right now and get it as a hard copy. The Life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulullah, with introduction and notes by Alfred Guillaume, Oxford University Press, pages 103-104. Because I'm going to quote it now. But don't tell me you don't believe it now. This is the English translation of Sirat Rasulullah. Okay? So now let me read it for you, buddy. And I want to put snippets. Among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel. In fact, here, let me send it to you. Let me send it to Terry because I can send it in private. Hold on. So don't know entertain me. Okay, there you go. You see it? I just sent it to you. That's this entire quote. And I put the relevant parts in capitals. Now, for the rest of you, I'm going to put it on the screen. Okay. Let's do it for the rest of you so you can see it. Okay. Among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel, which he received from God for the followers of the gospel. So what God gave Jesus to give to the Ahl al-Injil, the followers of the gospel, in applying a term to describe the apostle of God, meaning Muhammad, because Quran says there's supposedly prophecies of Muhammad in the scriptures with the Jews and Christians. Okay? <clears throat> is the following. It is extracted... From what John the Apostle wrote, set down, I'm sorry, for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus, son of Mary. Then I'm going to read the rest of it. And he now quotes John chapter 15, verses 23 to chapter 16, verse 1. So let me read it. He um, that hated can me. I, can I stop you for just one sec? Um, so I'm not always familiar when you refer to a John. Is, that, is this John the Baptist or is this John? No, John the Baptist died before Jesus. Okay. You just read it. it. says John the Apostle. Are you not reading it on the screen? This well, is yeah, one I of just, the disciples of I'm Jesus. I'm not always like, following which John. That's all. It just said it. From what John the Apostle said down, according to your Quran, this is this would be a Hawadi, one of the Hawadiyun disciples of Jesus. Okay. Are we getting it now? Yep. Okay, now it's quoting the Gospel of John written by the Apostle John, Hawadi, a follower of Jesus. And here... Ibn Ishaq cites John 15, 23 to 16, verse 1. Okay, so it says, He that hateth me hateth the Lord. And if I had not done in their presence works which none other before me did, they had not sinned. But from now they are puffed up with pride and think that they will overcome me and also the Lord. Right? But the word that is in the law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause, I without reason. But when the comforter, so now here Ibn Ishaq thinks the comforter is Muhammad. 
And this is in the Gospel of John, which we still read today. When the Comfort has come, whom God will send to you from the Lord's presence, and the Spirit of truth, which will have gone forth from the Lord's presence, this is John 15, 26, by the way, he shall bear witness of me, and you also, because you have been with me from the beginning, I have spoken unto you about this, that ye should not, let me get you the rest of it. Oop, hold on. The rest of it didn't come in. Hold on. Be in doubt. You should not be in doubt. Okay. Now, let me read the last, last paragraph. Because then Ibn Ishaq says, this is a prophecy of Muhammad. One second. Let me get you the last paragraph. Because I didn't put that all the way in. Here it is. For you and for them. The mu na hemena. God bless and preserve him. In Syriac is Muhammad. In Greek, he is the paraclete. So here you go. Let me get it for you. This is the last paragraph. So Ibn Ishaq says, this comforter is Muhammad. Okay, that's fine. I'm, we'll talk about that. But here it is for everyone else. I'm going to send it to you in private. So we can now agree that the gospel that the Quran confirms is the gospel of John? Mm, uh, Are you really? Ah, ooh, ah? Do I need to go over the verses again? No, I just, I just found what you were um, referring to, so I'm just reading it. Um, okay. So let me know when we can get to the point the Quran confirms the gospel that they have. Since you want to say it's the gospel of John, so be it. Let me know when we can agree so we can move on. Um, yeah, sure. Sure, we agree, right? The gospel, the Injil is referring to the gospel of John. So that gospel that the Christians would have had, that the Quran says... It's true, and that Muhammad bore witness. That supposedly even prophesied his coming. is the Gospel of John, right? Mm. Do we need to go through this again? Uh, I may have missed a part where... Yeah, you missed a lot of parts, because I think this is what happened. That's why I became Muslim, because the screws are not all there. Which part of John the Apostle wrote down the Gospel for them from the Testament of Jesus wasn't clear? Do I need to put that on the screen again? No, yeah, let me see, see on the screen. Oh, what? Say it again. If you, can you please just... Uh, here it is. Just have some patience. I'm sincerely from, trying to understand what you're saying. I don't know if you are, man, because it's taken 20 minutes. When I gave you, I even sent you the entire quote in private, and it's on the screen. Come on, you're playing games with me. Brother, I'm a Muslim trying to read everything you're sending me. Please okay, so well, patience. you're not my brother in faith. Hopefully, you'll be my brother in faith. Let's say I'm okay, your I'm brother in humanity. Talk. So at least there's. Do you read it? See now, you see, you're dragging again. See this, this talking where you're going off and peeling sympathy. You're not listening. Do you I'm see it sympathy. on the screen? Oh gosh. Do you see it on the screen? Do you see it on the screen? Let's see if it you're being subtracted. sincere. So this, the Ibn. See, here we go again. You see why we don't respect you and we think you're a liar? Do you see where it says John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them? Do you see that? Yes or no? Stop playing your game, appealing sympathy. We're not buying it. Okay. See? The guy's, he's a, he's a brain says man. that Muhammad said this, so. Okay. Let's try this a fourth time. Do you see Ibn Ishaq, the oldest biography on Muhammad, is acknowledging that the gospel that contains the prophecy of Muhammad, according to chapter 7, verse 157 of the Quran, the gospel that prophesied the letter prophet that's with them, is the gospel of John for the sixth time. Yes or no? See? And he says he's trying to learn sincere. You, you can't be sincere reading, when you follow the, Satan, Muhammad's father. I'm reading the book that you sent me. Okay, read it for me. Among read things it. which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated. In and the how did you get the book, by the way? Where did you get the book from? Uh, Archive.org, I believe. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Read it now. That's good. At least now you verified it. It's there. Um, in applying a term to describe... Wait, this. Among the things which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel, which he received from God. So Jesus refer receiving the gospel from God. Finish it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, mommy, you made me so feminine. Finish it, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're laughing at Muhammad. Believe me. Go ahead. In applying a term to describe the possible God is the following.
so he doesn't want to read out loud. You see how now you all of a sudden went... <laughs> I'm trying to hurry now because you're rushing me, so... Why can't you do it in the tone in which you did it previously, but conveniently when you got to the part of John... Because you were patient when I was reading the Quran, now you're not, so I don't know what you're Okay, read it loud after the part that he gave to the followers of the gospel. Because all of a sudden you went... Yeah, how convenient. You're very sincere, right? Go ahead. Read out loud so we can hear. You just wasted 10 minutes of my time because you're a joke. You're playing games. I'm about to block you because we're seeing through your facade. Do you agree with what you just read that John wrote down the gospel? It says here it is extracted from what John the Apostle sent down for them when he wrote the gospel for them. What did John write? The gospel. Do you agree John's gospel is the gospel? Gospel of John is the You got the five seconds before I muzzle your bastard Muhammad because you're not answering. Okay. Do you agree? Yeah, sure. Okay. So why did you take 30 minutes just to say, yeah, it's in front of my eyes. Even a blind man can see it. Even Muhammad who's burning in hell sees it. Even Muhammad from hell saw that quotation. I've only just been made aware of this information. Oh, so. And yet you were quick to become a Muslim. You ran to Islam and you didn't even study all the issues. Okay, so now that we finally, after 30 minutes, got to the fact that you agree, John wrote the gospel. So now, just to make sure you don't tap dance, do you agree the Quran is confirming the gospel that the Christians had? And here your source says that gospel is the gospel of John? Sure. Sure. Well, thank you for admitting Muhammad is a fraud and antichrist because that's the gospel where Jesus is said to be the eternal word with God who created all things, became flesh, the son of God who died on the cross and rose again. Thank you for proving that the gospel that the Quran confirms shows that Muhammad is the son of the devil and antichrist. Yeah, that's quite the conundrum. Thank you. At least you're honest. So now yeah, why don't you do yourself a favor? Okay, good. Now why don't you do yourself a favor? Go back and start reading the Gospels for the first time in your life with an open and fresh mind and ask God to show you if you made a mistake and whether these Gospels have the truth. Because you rushed into a religion from an agnostic, if you're telling me the truth, and I have no doubt, no reason to doubt you, without even knowing what Islam teaches and have no clue what the Bible teaches and parroting what you were told. Sure. Okay. Now, you said earlier, before you go, if you have a few more minutes... You kept saying, well, are you going to kick me or am I going to leave on my own? Do uh, you, you want to stay or do you want to leave? Because I had more questions. You wanted me. to kick me, so. I was going to kick you in five seconds if you didn't come to the realization, but you saw it now. So now you got another, hopefully, 20 minutes if you don't do, because I had to put pressure on you. Five seconds and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Now, coming back to the issue. You kept saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you translate sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for me? Peace and blessings be upon him. No, it doesn't mean blessings. Let me repeat it again. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The word sallam means peace. There is no word blessing in that phrase. Can you literally translate sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Peace be upon him, I believe. No. Peace be upon him is <clears throat> alayhi salam. Salam. The word for peace is salam. So let me okay. go back over the phrase again. Sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi upon him wa sallam. Sallam is the word peace. What's the word sallam? Sallallahu. I don't know. You are literally saying, may the prayers of Allah be on him and peace. Literally, sallah is the word for prayer. When you pray five times a day, what do you call it in Arabic? Salah. Say it again. Salah. Now, let me repeat the phrase. Salah lahu. Salah lahu. The prayers of Allah. That's what it literally means. The word for blessing is baraka. Baraka. B A R A K in transliteration. So I'm going to ask you a question. You literally just said, The prayers of Allah be on him and peace. Yep. Who does Allah pray to when he prays for Muhammad? <sighs> Well, I think this is again the whole Arabic thing, so I don't. No, I'm giving you if, the Arabic. If, I'm just gonna say I don't know every answer, every question. So. Well, let, let me repeat the Arabic for you. There are three words: baraka, blessing. It's not used in this phrase. 
Salam, peace, which is used, and Salah, which means prayer. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam literally means the prayers of Allah be upon him and peace. So that's Arabic. I've even written articles and I've debated Muslims on this. The word Salah, Salawat, plural for prayers. So I want to know who does your God Allah pray to when he prays for Muhammad? You didn't answer the question. Uh, he prays for Muhammad. To who? Well, your prayers, you're going to talk to someone, right? To who? Who does he pray to when he prays for Muhammad? Well, I don't think he needs to pray to anyone. But he does. Sallallahu means he's praying. So is yeah, he praying to himself? Just praying. It doesn't say to anyone. Okay, so but when you pray, you just you just pray and you're not praying to anyone? So when you pray you, to no one or you're praying to someone? It's my intention to pray to Allah, yes. So when Allah prays, is he praying to himself or are you just throwing out words out there for no one? I don't know Allah's intentions. So you can't tell what Allah is doing when he even tells you what he's doing when he gives you the words. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So when it says sallam, what does sallam mean? Peace. So what does Allah do? Muhammad, peace. So what does Allah do? Give him peace, right? Yeah. But how do you know? You don't know Muhammad's intentions. I mean Allah's intentions. So how do you know he's giving him peace? Because that's, see, this is your argument. Well, when Allah is uh, sallallahu prayer, I don't know what his intention is. But now you surely knew his intention that he wants to give Muhammad peace. So how do you know his intention was to give Muhammad peace? But when he prays, you don't know what his intention is. Well, he just, says, one, he just says he does. So it's okay. So he does. So he just prays and he just gives peace. But you don't know who he prays to, right? Nope. In thirty-three fifty-six of the Quran, it says Allah and His angels pray upon the Prophet, and you who believe, pray for him and salute him. Yeah. Right. You salli alayhi. You salli. So. It says, Allah and the angels perform salah on Muhammad. You salli, right? Yep. Ala Nabi. Okay. When the angels perform salah, they're praying. Who do they pray to? They're praying for Muhammad. For, but to the who? Angels, yeah. To who? When they well, pray to who? They're praying to, I would assume, Allah. So you assume you don't it doesn't say thing. anyway. Man, if they don't pray to Allah and they pray to themselves, then that means they're committing shirk. You just damned these angels to hell. I didn't say they're praying to themselves. Okay, so when it says Allah and the angels, you saloon ala nabi. You saloon ala nabi. Yeah, I don't I don't know Arabic, so Okay, well I'm gonna translate it. Allah and his angels pray. Allah means over or upon the prophet. So when the angels perform salah prayer, who do they pray to? Do you need to really ask that question? Okay, let's go with the second part. And it says, and you who believe, salu alayhi. You salu alayhi, pray upon him. Pray upon Muhammad. When you pray for Muhammad, who do you pray to? Allah. When the angels pray for Muhammad, who do they pray to? Allah. When Allah prays for Muhammad, who does he pray to? That you don't know, huh? It doesn't say. Yes, it does. You just said it. They said it. Because when it says Allah and his angels pray, and you pray, you just admit for anyone, when angels and believers pray, it's to Allah. It's the same sentence. Allah, angels, and believers all pray. You can tell me that the angels and the believers pray to Allah, but you can't tell me who Allah prays to. Yeah. All right. At least you're honest, and you're... Wanting to live in denial. Okay, that's good. Now, the, the other question related to is, why are you praying for Muhammad? Is he not in a state of peace? Uh, just um, formalities, I guess. Oh, formality. So, yeah, yeah, you know, just Allah's wasting our time having us pray for Muhammad. It's just formality. Well, so you, five don't, times a day. you don't believe in niceties, so I don't expect you understand. Can you show me where Allah says it's for formality and niceties? Or are you putting words in the no, mouth? I, of I was just saying that's what I that's what I assumed it would be. I, I don't I'm care not what saying the think. Quran says this. You need to prove it because you can't just tell me your opinion. You're not a prophet. You're not a messenger. You're not an Adam. You're not a scholar. You got to be careful what you say. Can you show me where in the Quran or the Sunnah says it's a nicety, it's a formality? Mm, I believe 
there's a hadith somewhere. Formality and nicety? No, it doesn't say that. No, no, not that literally. Not that literally. In fact, didn't Muhammad say in the sound hadith that if if you don't pray for him during the five times, five daily prayers, your prayer is incomplete and won't reach Allah? That's why when you pray five times a day, you do tashahud, don't you? Mm, yep. Okay. Can you repeat to me what tashahud is? Like do you want the Arabic or what? Give me Arabic and translate it for me. Because you they taught it to you, obviously. You've been praying for a year five times a day. Okay. Um. Go to Chef Google. I'll help you if you need. Sorry. No, I have it written down already. Yeah, go ahead. Slowly repeat the shahud and then translate it for everyone to see. I can just do English if you want. Okay, Speaking. do the English because I want to make sure you translate it correctly. But go ahead, go do the English. Um, uh, all greetings of humility are for Allah and all prayers and goodness. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Okay, bango, stop there. Say it again. Peace be upon you. Finish the sentence. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Okay. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. And then what do you say? And the mercy of Allah and his blessings. Okay. Now, Re repeat that one sentence. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Repeat that entire sentence, that section that you have to pray five times a day. It has to be part of your prayer. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. Okay, now let me ask you a question. According to chapter 39, verse 30 of the Quran, it says, Muhammad shall die, and they will die, and Muhammad is dead and buried. You agree with that, right? Uh, Yeah. Okay, so he's dead. So can you? I can ask you a question. Why are you talking to a dead man thousands of miles away from his grave? Well, it says he will die. It doesn't mean that he's like dead right oh, now. Oh, so he's still alive. So all alive. He goes, you'll die and they will die too. So those people died already. He goes, you will die and they will die too. Didn't they die? Yeah, everyone will die eventually. And did Muhammad die? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Like not. Oh, you mean when they die, he died? And they buried him in Medina. That wasn't Muhammad. So who was it? Was it his genie? No, I mean, we taste death, but the soul hasn't died yet. That's The Quran doesn't qualify that if you die, it's not really death. Because I'm telling you, it says you will die. Yes, I know what death is when your soul leaves. But you will die. And that's why, according to your Bukhari and Muslim, when o Omar found out Muhammad died... He took a sword and he was going to kill anyone who said Muhammad died. And then Abu Bakr recited chapter 3, verse 144. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and the messengers before him have died. So when he dies, will you turn on your heels and abandon the faith? He recited that to remind Omar that the messenger died like all messengers die. So whether you like it or not, Allah is the ever-living, serve him. So do I need to repeat your history for you? So Muhammad died. So let's stop the tap dance. And they buried him three days later. So my question is, you're thousands of miles away from where Muhammad is dead and buried. Why are you talking to him in your prayer? Uh, I don't believe he's like dead. Oh, so you believe he's hearing you then? Yeah. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Okay. So in your five daily prayer, you, you speak to Allah and you speak to a dead man and you don't see that you're a pagan idolater? Because your five daily prayers are supposed to be directed to Allah where you talk to him. You just admit you talk to him and this dead man and you say he can hear you. So you're now talking to Allah and Muhammad. Mm, Who else do you yeah, talk to in your five daily yeah. prayers that are supposed to be offered to Allah? Who else do you talk to? Um, I believe. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure if Abraham hears it, but we do make. Uh, no, you don't you talk to Abraham. Abraham. No, you don't. What you do oh, is. Well, say, that's why I said I don't know. If, I don't know if he hears it, but we. No, uh, you don't talk to Abraham. You ask Allah to pray for Muhammad and his family, as you pray for Abraham's family, and yeah. bless Muhammad and his family, as you bless Abraham's family. That's not talking to 
You're asking Allah to bless. But in this line, you're talking to Muhammad, peace be upon you, O Prophet. Yep. So who else do you talk to besides Allah and this dead man in your prayers five times a day? Mm, no one. No one else? I don't think so. So then you just admit you talk to Allah five times a day, which is worship. Isn't the ibadah the heart of worship your prayer? Yeah. So your five daily prayers are worship, right? Yeah. And how do you worship Allah? By talking to him, right? Mm, by praying, yeah. Yeah. Well, what is prayer? Talking to him. Or are you just talking to the genie next to you? Talking to him, right? Uh, it's not eh, just talking, but... Yeah. When you pray, you are talking and conversing. Do I need to get you a dictionary to what, know what talking is? When I say, oh, Allah, that means I'm communicating. I'm speaking, I am talking. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm speaking. Okay. So I want you to understand, you just admit it's recorded. In your five daily, daily prayers, which is the, the worship, the art of worship, you're talking to Allah and a dead man, and you still don't see how you just confirmed you're worshiping Muhammad like you worship Allah. Because you're talking to two persons in your five daily prayers, which is the heart of your worship. So you're dividing your worship between Allah and this dead man. And you're okay with it? Uh, he's not dead. Okay, he's alive. Were you okay with it though? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad you dead, you're okay dead. being a pagan, an idolatrous pagan. Now let me add to your paganism. Now your prophets kissed and smothered the black stone. And when you perform Hajj, pilgrimage, it is sunnah that you, if you can, if the crowds are too too long, kiss and smother that black stone. You okay with that too? Yeah, it's a sunnah. Oh, okay. So you're okay with taking an inanimate stone, kissing it like your prophet did, and then <clears throat> touching it like your prophet did, and weeping on it like your prophet did, and you still don't say that you're a pagan idolater? Yeah. Okay, oh, excellent, beautiful. I'm not, you're honest. And do you also believe that this stone is going to come to life and intercede for you? It's going to be given eyes and a tongue to intercede for you? Sure. Sure, okay. And you also believe that it was white and turned black from you pagans kissing it, absorbing your sin? I haven't heard that. Well, I'll give it to you right now. Hold on. Okay. I'm glad you admit that you are a blind, demonized idolater. May Jesus save you. I'm, I'm, this is very, we're happy because we're excited to at least have a Mohammedan admit he's a Mohammedan and he's a pagan, but he doesn't realize it. Thank you, sir. Hold on. Let me get you the hadith. Appreciate you, man. Okay. Do I have time to change my laundry, if you don't mind? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Because you're going to need to. I know. Maybe you soiled yourself. You're probably going to have to change. Go ahead. <laughs> it makes you laugh. I like you, buddy. <laughs> the guy's funny, dude. I think he's just having fun at my expense. There you go. He left. At least he's good, right? Good kid, man. Pray for him. Maybe he's making fun. That's okay. Maybe they sent him here. That's fine. But at the same time, maybe he's open and he's not that hardened and God will save him. He sounds familiar, though. I've heard from him. I've heard him somewhere. I don't know where. But at least he's, he's a good kid. You can tell. He's got a good spirit. He's just been blinded. Poor guy. I'm starting to feel sorry for him. Yeah. Okay. Sure. No problem. Yeah, I'm a pagan. Fine. Yeah, I'm idolater. Yeah. And my five daily prayers, which is worship. I speak to Allah on a dead man, but he's not dead, but it's okay. I can still speak to him. And this is not anything analogous to communion of saints, by the way. It's not analogous to communion of saints. I've already done shows showing why. Because Muhammad said, dua, invocation, invocation, prayer is worship. We don't believe that. Christianity does not teach, the Bible does not teach that prayer in every instance is an act of worship. No, it's not. But anyway. We're waiting for him. Now, guys, I guess gave you the link to the hadith. It was like, it was easy. You know, he's laughing. Here you go. Here it is. Here's the link again. Kitab al-Hajj, book 24, from Sunan Nasai, Nasai, Sunan Nasai, volume 3, book 24, hadith 2922. Hassan, it's good. But what does it say? I'm just waiting for him to come back. All right, there you go. Yeah, can you pray to Ancestor Sam? Yep. Uh, if you know these saints are in heaven, yes, you can ask them to intercede. 
But I don't know if your ancestors in heaven, because I don't know if you're going to make it to heaven, Peterson. The way you're going, you're probably going to end up in hell if you don't repent. Okay. Are you back, buddy? Because I can hear your mic. At least I heard your mic. You were there. He sounds like the kid that said the finale. Oh, really? I don't know, Joe. I, I've heard him before, but I don't know where. Anyway, I just want him to yeah, admit it. He's a guy. At least he's honest. Yeah. Yeah, I do speak to a dead man, but he's not dead. He's alive. And my five daily prayers, which is the heart of worship. So I'm speaking to Allah and Muhammad, which means that he is now dividing his worship to Allah and Muhammad. <clears throat> and then I'm okay with kissing a black stone and smothering it like my prophet did because it erases his sins. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, Peterson, you need to repent because of that comment shows you haven't repented and you're a fake and on your way to hell. And if you don't repent, I'm going to have to muzzle you for being that stupid. So I don't know if your ancestor Sam is in heaven. I don't know if you're going to make it to heaven. But I know the Blessed Mother is in heaven. Paul is in heaven. And they're alive and perfected, unlike you. So shut your mouth, <clears throat> Peterson, before I have to muzzle you. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we'll wait for him. Okay, folks, let me share hey, the hadith. I'm back. I'm okay, ready. now here. I guess here's the link. Uh, do you mind removing the what? Comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Has it been there for how long? Damn, I just. Man. I didn't even know I put that up. Honestly, I didn't think I had put that up. Sorry about that, friend. He was talking about Muhammad. Anyway, here. Uh, here's a link for you, buddy. You, you see it? I just sent it to you. Go to the comment section. Can you open it up? Oh yeah, I see it. In the private chat, not comments. Sorry, yeah, the private. Yeah, yeah, chat. yeah, yeah I see. Okay, open it up. Can you read it for us? Yeah. Okay. All right, Peterson. If you're being sincere and if you're not mocking, because I'm going to give you benefit of doubt, even though I don't believe you, because when you say ancestor Sam, you are mocking. But I'll give you the benefit of doubt, and because you're going to have to answer the Jesus Christ for every stupid word that comes out of your mouth. So if you're lying, you're going to answer to him. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on all of us. Who says, can I pray to ancestor Sam if they're not mocking? See, that's why I don't trust you, but that's okay. Now, can you read the hadith for us? It was narrated from Abdullah ibn Ubaid bin Umayr that a man said, O oh, Abu Abdurrahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the messenger of Allah say, Touch the, touching them erases sins. Does what? The two erases black corners, sins. one of them includes a black stone. So does what? Erases sins. Oh, so touching the and two corners, before you move on, touching the two corners, one of them includes a black stone corner. Erases your sin, huh? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So a black stone that's an inanimate object that can neither harm nor benefit you, according to Umar ibn al-Khattab, but if you kiss it and touch it and weep on it, it will then erase your sin and it turned black from all the sins of those who touched it and kissed it. And then Allah will bring it to life and give it a tongue and eyes to intercede for you. So this black stone is going to be your intercessor and you have no problem with that. Um, I'm not trying to be disagreeable, but do you have when it says yeah, it I, becomes black? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, dude, come on, man. Don't make it easy for me, sir. Okay. Here, let me get it for you. Here it is. Here's the hadith. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Dude, can you make it a little hard for me? You're making it too easy. Here it is. Here's the hadith. Here's the link for you. to be difficult. No, it's all right, man. I'm not. I'm just saying. But I'm, yeah, here it is. Here's the link. I just sent it to you private chat. Can you open it up? Okay. Uh, Shia, if you make hajj, you kiss the black stone. And Shia, you do worse. What you do is you slice yourself with knives and you bleed for your fake God like the prophets of Baal, Shia waves. You take knives and you take swords and you'll cut yourselves and ble bleed for your God. And you'll even cut the heads of your children, bleed for your God, just like the prophets of Baal. So you do worse. If you make Hajj, you'll lick the black stone. And on top of that, you cut yourself and you turn yourselves into a bloody mass for your God, just like the prophets of Baal. So you're worse, Shia. Go ahead, read it for me, bro. My brother in humanity. Uh, Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Allah said the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than milk than it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. You got it? 
So yep. do I need to give you more hadiths to prove that whatever I'm telling you, I try to be as solid and factual as possible. I make mistakes, but that's not intentional. So you're okay. I just want everyone to understand. You're okay with this inanimate black stone that was there before Muhammad, that was venerated by the pagans in Arabia. You're okay with kissing it, touching it, weeping on it. You're okay with it turning black from your sins, and you're okay with it erasing your sins if you venerate it, and you're okay with it coming to light where Allah will give it eyes and a tongue to then intercede for you, to save you, and appease Allah to forgive you. You're okay with all that? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah. And so you really don't see you're a pagan idolater, huh? Nope. All right. That's lame, man. Whatever floats your boat. I'm, just, I'm glad that you're okay with it. Now, yep. why did your prophet adopt the pagan practice? And why did Omar, when he went to kiss the black stone, he goes, I know that you're a stone that neither benefits nor harms. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So why did he adopt this pagan practice? Because the pagans were venerating the black stone. Allahu Alam, I don't know. Allah oh, Allahu Alam, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So here you're telling me you became a Muslim because the concept of God, Allah's just, and this and that. And yet, all of these issues that you have been asked about and you have no clue why you do them or why Muhammad did them, and you're okay with it. Okay, amazing. Now, are you okay with what the Quran teaches when it comes to sexual ethics? Are you okay with that? Yeah. You are, huh? So you, you would you marry a nine year old? Um, no. Are you okay with your Muslim brother, your brother in faith, marrying a nine year old? Mm, that's up you to him. Say I yes. Because if you say no, you condemn chapter sixty five verse four of the Quran. You condemn what the Hadith say, and the example of your prophet. So are you okay with? A Muslim brother, a brother in arms, who prays next to you, shoulder to shoulder, let's say he's in his 20s and 30s, then he goes marries a nine-year-old and has sex with her. I don't know the thick of the actual issue, like if it was What's ever it? changed. It's in every fiqh hadith, every scholar will tell you that Muhammad married a nine-year-old, and it is acceptable in Islam, especially on the basis of 65 verse 4, Anyone who tries to prohibit it is a kafir. Yeah, in the West, you can't do it. So let me now rephrase the question. You're living in Afghanistan, and your Muslim brother asks this man, I want to marry your daughter. I am in my 30s. She is nine. Here's the dowry. And the man says, sure. And then he takes that nine-year-old to his bed, and he deflowers her. Are you okay? He said that? the man. That would be me, right? I would be that man. No, I said your Muslim brother. You said I'm in. You said I'm in Afghanistan. Yeah, with your Muslim brother. You want to make it Muslim sister? Did you hear that fool? You are in Afghanistan, and your Muslim brother. That's what I said. Okay. Are you okay with that? If she is mature and of sound mind, it's the. What nine-year-old is mature to have a thirty-year-old penetrating her? Depends on the situation. Depends on situation. So, do you have a sister that's nine? No. Do you have anyone that's a child in your family? Because you need to be arrested because you're dangerous for what you just said. If you, if you have that. children, someone needs to report you because you are a pedophile and you sanction pedophilia. You are sick if and you dangerous. Believe that. If you believe that, go ahead. Yeah, I, if I knew where your contact information, I would warn the FBI. So we got a sick, deviant Mohammedan who has no problem with Muslims preying on minors. Because that's what you just said, yeah. Oh, no big deal. No big deal taking someone's nine-year-old. I have a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. If you and your filthy Mohammedans came near them, I'd be in jail for murder if you were to dare get near my daughters. Well, you would You would have to consent. So if you don't consent, then there's no issue. In Islam, a Muslim man cannot reject marriage with a nine-year-old because of her age. The only reason he would reject is because he's not a faithful Muslim. Well, you're also her guardian, so you'd be able to object. Do you understand what I just said? In Islam, a guardian cannot object to his nine-year-old being married to a Muslim because of her age. The only reason he rejects because he's not pious enough, or he may impose a hefty dowry, which is un-Islamic. Yeah, I don't Islamically, believe that. Islamically, 
if he's if he's a good Muslim, a devout Muslim, a God fearing Muslim, and he's pious and he's responsible, there is no grounds for the father not to give his nine year old because it is Muhammad's example and it's part of sixty five verse four of the Quran and it's part of Sharia that you can marry a nine year old. The father would still have to consent. His and he consents consent because if, if you go to a mufti. See, I got to have to educate you. See, either you're being a liar, and the fact that you're even trying to just fight shows how sick and dangerous you are. If he were to go to a mufti and say, the father is not allowing me to marry his nine-year-old because she's nine, he would be considered a kafir because then he's going against Muhammad Sunnah. You understand that, right? Did I make it clear? Yeah, the reason isn't because she's the, like the letter, the number age. It's just because that he doesn't want her to. Oh, to. okay, good. So you admit the age is okay, yeah. though. It's but not it's, like a number. It's not like a number. Well, thing. It's okay if she's nine. He wouldn't say, no, 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 no. She's immature, right? Well, the parent would have to consent. Let me repeat the question again, which you didn't answer. If she's nine, it's okay that she's nine. So if he doesn't consent, it's not because of her age, right? If he doesn't consent, then there's probably some reason why he doesn't. But not the age, right? It cannot be the age. Islamically speaking, according to Sunnah Sharia, he cannot reject because of her age. Can you prove that? Yeah. If I have to prove it, you know, I'm going to tear Muhammad to shreds. Yes, I can. Your prophet's example, chapter 65, verse 4 of the Quran, all of your commentaries and your Muslim scholars. And here, let me prove it to you. If I need to prove that, man, you are one sick human being for becoming a Muslim without understanding Islam. Prove there that the person must accept. No, that's not what I said. Let me repeat it again. Can't refuse. If he rejects marriage, if a Muslim man wants to marry his nine-year-old, if he rejects it on the ground she's too young, he's an unbeliever. He cannot reject on that ground. You understand? He can't. He can't reject on the grounds of that. The she's age nine. Alone. She's too young. It has to be some other reason. Yeah. Okay. So you agree? So I don't need to prove it because I got my article and I link to Slam Q and A. I link to Bukhari and Muslim and all of that. Do I need to give you the link to my article? Where then? No, I link to the. No, so we you, establish so, that, right? So we agree. It's not only the the. the number Notice how you just switched my words again. You see how you just this my words? You said, do we agree? It's not only. See, you're lying. I didn't say that. I said, he cannot object because she's young. Why are you twisting my words? No, no, no. It's, you said young, young, but that's not the that's not the issue. Nine. Okay, nine is not young. The the age nine. Okay. So let's try it again. You demonize misfit. That's why the call guy called you dyslexic. Can a Muslim, if he is a Sunni and faithful to Muhammad, Say you cannot marry my nine-year-old because she's too young. Yeah. No, you can't. You're lying through your teeth, you satanic bastard. Are you lying to me? Oh, okay. I'm saying he has the grounds to object. Let me repeat it the fourth her. time, you dyslexic. You demonize dyslexic. Okay. Let me repeat it a fourth time. According to the sunnah, a Muslim man cannot say to a Muslim... You cannot marry my daughter because she's nine. He cannot reject it because of her age. Yes or no? Because I'm All about right. to post the prophet. The, the, you said there was an Islam QA link. Could you share that? Yeah. I just sent you my link where I quoted. Here he goes. Here it is, Islam QA. Right here. First one. Oop, the sorry. Oh, these bastards removed the page. <laughs> Guys, it is a coincidence they removed the page. Here was the link that I just cited from. Islam QA, you can find it in archive. I just sent it to you private. Now the bastards removed it from their website. You believe that, guys? See what satanic bastards? I guess they caught on that we were quoting it. Here it is. Islam question answer. General Supervisor Sheikh Mohammed Saleh Munajid. Is there a set age? For marriage in Islam? And the answer is no. But they removed it. Gee, I wonder why. I'm going to try using the Wayback Machine. Go ahead. Use it. I gave you the link. It's right there. Here, let me get it for you. I have well, it. Well, it's right there. I gave you the link. It's right here. What demonic? Yeah, I have, yeah, I have the link. Oh, did it pop up? 
No, I'm using the way back because you said it was uh, taken down. Yep, it was. So it didn't, and when you go to the way back, put in the link. Did it pop up? Did I at least archive it? Because I gotta use the way back machine. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, right. I mean, I'm seeing if it's right, there. Right. Good. Uh, How convenient, huh, guys? They removed it. Gee, but don't worry, we got other stuff that they didn't remove. Gee. How convenient. Hope you've learned on this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe, hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. And do it to write in the comment section whatever thing you've learned from this amazing video. As you can see in this video, this young guy was once a Christian while he, when he converted into Islam because he claimed the Bible is corrupted and the Bible is not it's not clear for him to understand that the Quran is more clear for him to understand that the Quran say that Allah is one and, and the God they are serving is one God and it's the same God that we Christians are serving. And Sam began to make it clear to him that no, that these things are not in alignment. This Islam is not the same God we are serving, it's not the same God they are serving. And Sam, we Sam began to give him proof that it was said in the Quran that they are worshiping their prophet. That means each time they are praying, they worship their prophet five times a day. So why would they be worshiping their prophet? Does that mean their prophet is still alive while he's long dead? And this Islam guy said, yes, that our prophet is still alive. And out of some said to him that this guy does not know what he's saying because he don't know the Quran. Because I believe it's out of ignorance he mentioned this word. And some made it clear to him that no, that our prophet is long dead and is not even alive and some went forward and showed him that where it was said in the quran that these guys they worship stone and on the last day the stone we speak for their sins which is the black stone now we speak for their sins and we make them whole and make them go to heaven so if they pray to their muhammad why is it that their muhammad does not pray to their god to cleanse them from sin and now expecting a common stone that we now clean away their sins and now take them to heaven if truly they claim their allah is in heaven with god so does this thing sound nice in the hearing of this guy and this guy was confused and some went forward and showed him that it was said in the quran that their muhammad got married to aisha at the age of six years and even have penetration with her while she was nine years so is it good for a man at 45 years old to get married to a to a girl a, a little girl at that age of six years so does this thing sound nice to the hearing of someone who is in this religion that is worshipping a old that is worshipping a man who claims he's having the living God and is doing all this adultery in in this age? And some should the way it was said in the Bible that we don't worship stones, that God made it clear, let no man worship any other God except him. So if a man is worshipping Muhammad or praying to Muhammad, that means they are trying to say or they are saying that Muhammad is their God. So this means the Allah they are claiming to say they are serving, that means directly is pointing to Muhammad himself. At the end of this video, this guy ended up the call and later called back and gave his life to Christ. Thanks for watching this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe, hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified.